Hi there YouTube and welcome to this video. In this video I would like to show you how you can get around the online account creation during the initial setup of Windows 11. There is currently a lot of tutorials out on the internet and I have found a good collection of some of them here on Windows Central. Uh, these methods all get around the online account creation that is in Windows 11 currently. But this fall, when the next version of Windows 11 releases, they are going to lock down all these methods. They are going to make sure they don't work. They have simply taken all these workarounds and blocked them. I have, however, found a way that I don't think they can block, and I would like to show you how I do it. To do this, I have already downloaded the Windows Insider Preview. And I have that up and running in a Hyper-V installation right here. So this is just a virtual machine of everything. Now, if we start going through this tutorial, we will be forced to create an online account. It doesn't matter if we disable the internet or whatever we do, we will be forced to create an internet account. So if I hit, at this point, when you have this screen, you hit Control, Shift, and F3. That'll force Windows to restart and open up in something called audit mode. I have shown audit mode on my channel before, and it's a function you can use to pre-prepare a system for an end user, much like an OEM does, like HP and Dell and these guys. Uh, that's how you see the custom wallpaper showing up and all the bloatware pre-installed. Now, when we open up an audit mode, we can customize and tamper a little bit with Windows, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to need a couple of things for this. And I'm just going to show you the files here. You can find them all in my public Google Drive. The first file we have here is the deploy XML file. And I'm just going to show you exactly what this is. This is a list of instructions for Windows and the sysprep tool that we're going to use. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And this is basically just going to tell it to hide all the settings that it's going to go through in the initial setup. So you can see here is just hide EULA page, hide local account, and so forth. The only thing here that's a little funny is this one called protect your PC, and that's set to setting three. That just means it's going to try and disallow Microsoft from collecting any information from you. So all those things you see when Windows initially starts up, it's basically going to answer no information collection allowed or whatever the least restrictive option is. And that's all this is going to do. And this is a file you can go and generate with Microsoft's own tools. I'm just going to give it to you so you don't have to deal with it. The other things we're going to use is this deploy command. This is the command we'll use to initiate the restart of the Windows system to get things going again. This is going to call a sysprep tool that's already inside Windows. And we're going to call some functions for it, which is OOBE. So we're actually going to force it to do the out-of-box experience, which is just what we skipped with Control shift of 3 That's where you put in the language and the network and the online account creation. But this XML file that we're going to call a little bit later is actually going to skip OOBE. So it's kind of a little tw tweak we're doing there. We're also going to generalize the system. This is quite important as drivers can be quite funky in audit mode. So it's always a good idea to generalize the system. It just means it's going to reset all the hardware identifiers. And when Windows starts up, it's just going to recognize all the hardware once again. So it takes a couple of minutes, but it saves you a lot of hassle later. Now, there is one little asterisk here, and that's where these commands here come in. If you are using a home version of Windows 11, you have to use the command line to create a user account in order to skip this. If you're on a pro version, you can use the GUI. I'm going to show you both, but here are the commands, and I'm going to leave them in a text file so you can just download them, and then you can change them or whatever you want. But that's just so you know what we're going to do. I'm going to leave this one up because I can't remember these in my head. I never use them. Now, I forgot to install Windows on English here, so I'm just going to have to translate you. I'm sorry. Uh, this thing that pops up right here is actually the sysprep tool. And we're not going to use the GUI for this, so we can just go ahead and close this one out. We don't need it. Now, I'm going to show you how to create a user from the GUI first. What we're going to do is we're going to hit the search bar down here, and then we're going to type run. So we can get the run command. Now on Danish, that's like this. And in here, we're going to type control user passwords 2. And notice there is a space between control and user passwords 2. Hit OK. And that's going to get us started on the GUI. This is something you can do in the pro version, by the way, if I 
wasn't clear. Then we click advanced and we click advanced once more. And we're now in the utility that's only available for the pro version. So here we open up users. We're going to right click and create a new user. We're then going to name the user. I'm just going to name it GUI. And I'm going to say this, uh, do, this user does not have to change the password at next logon. And the password will never expire. And then I can hit create. There we go. You can now see the GUI user is created. Now we need to go into groups. We're going to need to go into administrators. And then we're going to have to add a user to the administrators. And then we're just going to search it out here. Hit check names and then hit OK. Now the user we have created is a member of the administrators. And at this point, we're actually at, uh, we can actually restart Windows and things are going to work. But I'm going to show you how you can do this if you're forced to use the command line as well. And I'm going to leave this one up so we can just see uh, the user being created. And there we go. I'm going to minimize this and close that. So we're going to hit uh, the search bar and then we're going to type CMD to get a command prompt. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is to create a user. So we're going to type net, make a space, type user, make a space, forward slash add, and then we're going to type out the username. So we're going to type this user CMD for command prompt. That's just to make it easy for us to see. Now, if you want to create a password for this specific user, you can make a space and then you can type out the password. Um, if you want to hide the password, just in case this is a little extra tip, you can make a star and it'll ask for the password. And it'll actually not, if you listen, I'm going to shut up. You can hear I'm typing on my keyboard, but it's not showing anything on the screen. That's just, it's hiding the password. It is registering the keystrokes. It's just hiding it visually. That was a little extra tip. So it's not something you have to do. Now we need to add this user to the admin group. So we're going to type net local group. And then we're going to type out administrators. Now, this is going to be translated if you're using different versions of Windows. So if you're not using English, and by the way, it needs to be in plural as well, like multiple. Um, so you may have to go in and figure out what this is actually called. Um, now I'm going to have to change this a little bit because I'm on Danish. There we go. And then we're going to type the user that we would like to add. That was CMD. And by the way, it's case sensitive here. And then we're going to forward slash add. There we go. The command was uh, performed or completed. And if we check in here, we can just refresh the page. We can now see CMD is created along with the one I created with the password. And if we go into groups and into administrators, we can see that CMD has been added to the group as well. At this point, we are ready to restart. And uh, I just forgot that I need to prepare a little file to get these uh, files into the virtual machine. So just hang on for a second. And there we go. I'm back. And I've just created a ESO file that I can actually open up in here. Now we need to copy this deploy file into the C drive of the system. And I'm just going to put it in a folder called deploy. Now, remember where you put this file as you will need to type out the path for this specific file. You can save it wherever you want. Just make sure you type out the correct path for it, which is what we're going to do next. If you remember, we had this deploy command here and we're going to need that right now. So I'm just going to copy it inside the virtual machine. And then I'm going to open up another run command. And then I'm going to paste it here. And then all I have to do here is just change the path to deploy. Every time there is a backslash, it means we've gone into a folder. So mine needs to look like this. It's on the C drive in the folder. That's the backslash deploy and backslash in that folder. You can find the deploy.xml file. And then I'm just going to hit OK. And we're going to close this one down and we're just going to wait a couple of seconds and we should start seeing some action. There we go. Now it's going to start the generalizing phase. And depending on how fast the computer is, this is going to take a couple of minutes. And when it's done, it's just going to shut down the system and it's ready to be turned back on. When we turn it back on, it's going to skip the unknown account creation. And 
that's that. So we're just going to give it a little time to finish here and then we're going to go and see how it works. There we go. Windows is now shutting down and I need to just restart my uh, virtual machine here. And as you can see, now we're going to see the effects of the generalizing of the system. It's now going to re-prepare all the devices. There we go. You can see Windows now started up and, oh, yeah, that's fine. It's just going to change the resolution here. And you can see we now have three users that we can log into. And the GUI is the user I created during the GUI and CMD was the one I created there. Um, yeah, that's fine, I don't know. I think it may have half locked into the CMD user. It's just because I made two. But as you can see, it has completely skipped the online account creation. We are on a local account and it should get us into the desktop any second now. I think it's just the usual things that it normally do after the um, setting all your things. It's like just waiting a little moment, like it's wasting your time or whatever. I think it's just what it's doing right here. There we go. We are now into the desktop. And if we click in here to the user and change account settings, you can see we are on a local account or it says local account here. And that's it. That's how you can skip it. And notice by the way that I have been on the internet the entire time I am connected. And if I open up the browser and say no to a ton of things here. This thing was online the entire time. I did not change the network settings. This one was internet connected throughout this process. That is how you can escape the online account creation during the first setup of Windows 11 22H2. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you liked it. Hit the subscribe if you want to keep updated with more videos. And thank you for watching.